Generators are full screen, sometimes animated backgrounds that can be used for a variety of purposes. You can find them by going up here. Let me turn on my magic circle. There we are. Going up here and clicking on the titles and generators icon. Cool keyboard shortcut is Option Command 1. Option Command 1 takes you right there in a single mouse click. There's two sections to this. There's titles, which we're going to talk about next, and generators. Inside generators, there are a lot of different versions to choose from. I happen to also have FX Factory Pro installed on my system. I won't be showcasing any of those effects today. First place I want to start is textures. This has been in Final Cut for a long time, but what you may not know is that it's more than just this really grungy wall. If we select it and go up to the Generator Inspector, which is up here, and if the inspector is not showing, you can either click this icon or type Command 4 to toggle the inspector on and off. Go here and look at where it says Type. There are a variety of different textures that are here, some of which are just really, really fun to play with. I like that one especially because of the color, and I like this one because of the, the texture. Textures are really useful to put behind a, a full screen graphic. It's good to fill text with a texture. You can use it for adding texture to a still image. There's lots of different ways that we can use these, but many times I look at them and the default setting is really boring or really uninteresting, and I figure there's nothing there to look at. Actually, then Grunge has got multiple options, Gradient's got options, Natural has options, Metal has options. Paper does not, Pinstripes does, so that you've got choices to choose from. Then another category called Backgrounds, and this is an example here. These are all animated as opposed to textures, which are stills. The problem that Apple has with many of its backgrounds is they're way too bright. If we want to use them to put text over, the background is so bright your eye gets distracted by the background and doesn't read the text. One of the things that we want to do is to look at ways to make the background darker. There's a number of ways we can do that. The first is to select the background, go back up to the generator inspector, and we can change the shape from, say, circles to squares or triangles. Or we can change the color. Blue is a really nice muted color. Green is a muted color. Gold is a little bit too much in your face. And gray, I mean, it's nice. Gray is a perfectly neutral color, but... To me, I like either the blue or the green options. So we'll just go back to circles and make them blue. And as you can see, they're animated. New with Final Cut 11 is another category called dynamic backgrounds, and Nebula is a good example. The interesting thing about dynamic backgrounds is that they are of indeterminate length. The longer you make them, the more they move without repeating. They're a, a fascinating example of, of a never-ending graphic. I took this out to a minute and a half and did not have any obvious loop points, which makes it really useful when you want to have something moving that lasts for a long time. Click here. These don't have any published parameters, so you have to look at each dynamic background on its own inside the generators category. Another, which you may ignore, is way down here under Objects. And if I select here, notice that I can change this from a circle to a square or a rectangle or a pentagon. We can change the internal color. We can change the color of the border. We can change the width of the border. We can turn the inside off or turn the outside off. Again, by experimenting with these, you'll discover that there's a whole lot more to play with than you might first look at or think about when you look at the graphic inside the, the browser itself. There's another setting. This, the shapes is inside elements, and timecode is inside elements. What this does is this displays the timecode of the project, but I can stretch this over multiple clips. It's like a an adjustment layer in Photoshop. It applies to more than one clip. Well, what makes this especially interesting is that when I select it and go up to, again, the generator inspector, I can change the text and say, for instance, source, have it display the source time code, which will vary from one clip to another. I can change its position by grabbing the dot and dragging it up. I can change the color 
and we'll just make it yellow and I can change the size so it's less in your face and then when I output this I can output a video and send it to the client and have all the source time code or the project time code burned into the video so the client can make explicit reference to it. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at effects inside Final Cut Pro 11. For the complete version of my online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 377. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.